Hey y'all, it's Jennifer. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to a Victober video. Happy Victober. Uh, I really wanted to kick Victober off this year with a discussion of one of my favorite Victorian authors, and that is Charles Dickens. And originally, when I was planning out Victober content, I really just wanted to do kind of a ranking video of all of Dickens's works that I have read thus far. But when I sat down to really plan that, I thought about the fact that I'm just really excited about what I have to come from Dickens. Uh, and so I just decided to make this really an all-encompassing discussion video. I'm, I'm gonna talk a little bit about just why I like Dickens because that is something that I am asked quite frequently is why I like Dickens or what it is about Dickens writing that I find very compelling. Uh, so I am definitely going to rank the books that I have read thus far and I'm going to talk a little bit about what's to come for me with Dickens that I'm really looking forward to. But uh, just to kick things off, I do want to tell you why I love Dickens. I think I had a very strange misconception of his writing prior to trying him. And I think it's a misconception that a lot of people have. And I do think too, maybe it's not a misconception. It's something that's there. And thus it is something that's going to irritate certain readers. So I understand why Dickens does not work for everyone. But there is kind of a level of sentimentality to his writing and to his stories that I really appreciate. I think you go into a Dickens book knowing that you're going to experience some kind of emotion, be that happy or sad. And there's something about that that's very comforting to me as a reader. Uh, and I know for a lot of people, it feels very overly sweet, uh, saccharine, and even just a little bit emotionally manipulative. I've heard that quite a bit about Dickens, that he tries to get you invested in characters that he is going to do incredibly terrible things to. And he knew that. He knew that about his audience. And so to some people, there is an incredibly manipulative element to his writing, that he is trying to get a certain emotion out of you as a reader. And for me, that works really well. And I think it's why I enjoy his writing. It's the reason why I have come back to Dickens time and time again. And I think it's why his books tend to be ones that stick with me. But I also really like that Dickens tends to blend humor and drama very, very well. There are always very nice lighthearted moments in his books. And there are also always really nice, deep, dramatic moments in his books. And so that's also something that I think is hit or miss for a lot of people. If you don't like Dickens's humor, then you're probably not going to get on with some of his books. So I found, but apparently he and I get on. Apparently his humor is something that I find really funny. I find myself laughing out loud at Dickens books. I also find myself crying at Dickens books. And so there is something to his writing that apparently just connects to me personally. And so I really enjoy reading him because I do know that I'm going to experience experience uh, an emotion while reading him, be it happy or sad. There's always a real warmth to his writing. And I think Dickens's characters are also always very complex and dynamic. Even characters that you don't necessarily like, I think you see something in. And I am somebody who does really get very obsessed with prose and with a writer's writing style. And I think that Dickens has a very unique writing style. He has a very unique authorial voice. I think he is an author that you feel on the page. And I really like his voice. I love his tone. I love the way he describes things. There's often really beautiful turns of phrase in his writing. And so I just think he really combines a lot of things that I am looking for. I'm always looking to get emotionally invested in a story. And that happens rarer and rarer for me nowadays, actually, that I do get truly invested in a story. Uh, and so this is something that I found happens with me in Dickens nearly every time. There are tons of other reasons why I love Charles Dickens and his writing, but uh, those are just a few. So I think Let's start with the ranking. I'm probably going to make some people mad here, but I think definitely I should start my ranking. I'm going to go from bottom to top, so I'm going to go from least favorite to favorite, but I do think I should start with my DNFs, neither of which are permanent DNFs. 
The first of these is a Oliver Twist, and this is my most recent DNF from Charles Dickens, and it hurts me to say that I DNF'd it because it's actually one of Dickens' shorter works, and it is a book that I think is potentially his most famous other than A Christmas Carol. Well, I would say that Oliver Twist has the most presence in pop culture, and so I do think that's probably ultimately what made me have a poor experience with this and why I put it down is that I do think I went into this with a certain set of expectations and the book is not at all what I thought it was going to be. It differs quite a bit from the adaptations of it and a lot of people have told me that and a lot of other Dickens fans have told me that actually Oliver Twist is probably his worst book. And I can definitely see that. I really struggled with this. And I remember telling someone uh, that I just was having a really hard time with it and that I actually thought it was kind of bad. Uh, and the person said, bad as in badly written or bad as in terrible things continue to happen to the characters. And it's actually both. I think Oliver Twist is really brutal. Uh, it's an example of something called a Newgate novel. And the Newgate novel kind of glamorized the lives of criminals. This was kind of a genre novel that came about in the early 1800s. Uh, and so Oliver Twist is sort of an example of that. But Oliver Twist too apparently did not start life as a novel. It started life as kind of a social commentary and a comment on the workhouses and children working in poor conditions. And I think early on in the novel, that is something that you see quite blatantly, is that this was always kind of meant to be informational. So Oliver Twist was starting to be a bit of a heavier read and a heavier read than what I thought it was going to be. And I never even got to the good part. I never met Nancy. I never met Fagin. Uh, so this is one I will definitely come back to. I just don't have high hopes about it. And I didn't really, when I picked it up the first time, I know that Oliver Twist will probably rank fairly low for me among the rest of Dickens's works. But I am a bit of a completionist. Dickens is an author that I would like to read everything by. I mentioned that in a Victober video from last year or the year before where I was talking about Victorian authors that I would like to read in full. Charles Dickens is one of those and so I don't feel like DNF's count. I really need to come back to Oliver Twist just to say that I finished it. My other DNF is Bleak House, which was a pretty unintentional DNF. I was reading this with a colleague and we were reading it in serialization form. So every month we were reading the part that would have been published when it was serialized. And we both really struggled with that. And so it didn't work for either one of us. We just kind of unintentionally DNF'd it, but my colleague has come back to it and read it straight through and said it was very good. And so he believes that the problem we had with it was trying to read it one part a month. And I completely agree. I do think there will be more for me to enjoy in Bleak House if I just read it straight through. But I will say the first half of it that we read was very, very slow to me. But a lot of people have told me that it picks up pace, but it is a book that felt extremely slow, though I do think it has some of Dickens's most beautiful writing that I have read thus far. Uh, so this is definitely one that I will return to and I fully expect to love. Okay, moving into the books of Dickens's that I have finished. Uh, at the bottom of my list is a book that I feel kind of has to be there. And I feel bad about this because in a weird way, this is one of my favorite things that I have read from Dickens, but it is his last novel and it is the novel that he left unfinished. So kind of in the realm of DNFs, I was kind of forced to DNF The Mystery of Edwin Drood because it was unfinished. And really you were reaching the point in the book where you're really invested in what happens next. You're really excited to keep reading. You have just really reached the point of truly being invested in the story when it just cuts off. The Mystery of Edwin Drood is truly a murder mystery novel. And so while some of the other books of Dickens's you might could have seen value in only reading half the book of, I don't think you can here because you never reached really the high point of the plot. You never solved the mystery. Now, I think you kind of know what happened and I think you kind of know who did it, but Dickens left this unfinished and he never told anyone what he intended to do. So he never told anyone the ending. 
So it's not even as if you're reading something like Wives and Daughters that was slightly left unfinished and you know exactly where the story was going to go. Dickens only got half through this. There were supposed to be 12 parts serialized and I believe he got through six uh, when he died. So this book is truly half completed. And so I think it kind of has to be at the bottom because it is a book that I would struggle to recommend to someone. I struggle to recommend a book that is completely unfinished. I would struggle to recommend a series that was unfinished. And so this is one that I think kind of has to be at the bottom of the list, but I feel bad about it because I really, really enjoyed this. But it's a real shame because there were aspects to this that I enjoyed far more than I have some other things by Dickens because this took place in a cathedral town, which was called Cloisterham, and it was just really cozy. The language around the church was just beautiful, and there was like a scene that took place towards a graveyard, and it was really just eerie and beautiful. There were gothic elements to this that I really liked, but it did feel just a bit like a nice cozy read, and I think it would be a great one for this time of year. But sadly, I think I have to put this at the bottom of the list. Next up is A Christmas Carol, which I didn't bring down here, but I don't feel like I need to say very much about A Christmas Carol. Uh, Christmas Carol has never been my favorite thing. I know, I know. It really never has been. And this is one where I see the complaint that Dickens is very sentimental and he's very over the top. But that again works very well for me because it's Christmas and I do think there is something to Christmas that feels that way. And I think it's very present in A Christmas Carol. And in so many ways, we have A Christmas Carol to thank for what kind of the modern day Christmas is uh, as a celebration, which is really, really interesting how instrumental this story was in getting people off work for Christmas. Uh, it's just really interesting how this book played its role in kind of the Christmas season, in how the holiday kind of became constructed publicly, uh, which I think is just very fascinating. But it's very short. It's a novella. It's a short story, basically. So this is one that I think is most people's introduction to Dickens. And I think it's probably a very good place to start. This was the second thing by Dickens that I read, and I really, really enjoyed it. I enjoyed it more than I thought I would. This is, I think, for most of us, a story that we know by heart now. It's a story that we've heard so many times or we've seen adaptations of so many times that we know it like the back of our hand, but it is still a really magical story to read. Uh, so I do wanna say when I'm ranking these things, I have liked everything, maybe not Oliver Twist, but I have liked everything that I have read by Dickens. So this is kind of an arbitrary ranking really. Next on my ranking, is David Copperfield. And I have mixed feelings about this because I read this over a few months. And I think it was probably not the best thing to do, especially coming off of DNFing Bleak House because I was reading it for too long a period of time. I do think that that really made the experience of reading David Copperfield feel a little bit lackluster to me in comparison to reading some of his other novels. So this is one that I fully intend to return to one day. I would really love to come back to this one day and reread it and read it straight through. And I do think that I would probably feel better about that. But uh, this is one that I really enjoyed the process of reading, but I was constantly in my mind comparing it to Great Expectations, which is my favorite. It will be at the top of this list. And I think there are a lot of reasons to draw parallels between David Copperfield and Great Expectations. They're both told in first person. They're both kind of a life story or coming of age story type of thing. And I just think it's done better in Great Expectations than it is in David Copperfield. But David Copperfield is uh, pretty iconic and it has a lot of iconic lines, a lot of iconic characters. And for many people, it rates as their favorite. So this is one that I would really like to reread because I do feel like it would move up for me uh, on a reread. So now we're at my top three. So at number three, we have the Pickwick Papers, which I loved. I love the Pickwick Papers so much. Yes, a lot of it is meandering. Yes, it does not need to be this long, but it is so funny. It is so charming. The Pickwick Papers is Dickens' first published novel and it's his first serialized novel. This is a book to me that you can feel is very serialized. You can feel exactly when 
it was cut off to be published, and I think it works very well. In many ways, though, it makes the book feel very episodic, and so you kind of move in and out of stories and chapters in a way that you would a sitcom, maybe, where you know the players and you know the actors, you know the characters, and they are just in a different situation this week. But if you missed this situation and you watch the next episode, you wouldn't really be lost because you still know who the characters are. That's the way the Pickwick Papers feels to me, but there's a lot of really beautiful language in the Pickwick Papers that is in the form of these stories. So the Pickwick group is a group of characters that are really interested in hearing stories from people. And so they go around throughout the book and there will be these interludes of characters that they come into contact with telling their story. And some of these stories are very fairy tale like some of them are very tragic, some of them are very funny. And I just think they are absolutely brilliant. Uh, so this is one that I actually didn't have very high expectations for, but I really truly enjoyed. At number two, I am shocked it is up this high, but at number two is A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens. This is one that I really thought at the time of reading probably would be ultimately forgettable to me because I really struggled with it. I didn't find it to be great in terms of characterization, especially when you compare it to something like David Copperfield. I find A Tale of Two Cities falls quite a bit in comparison there, but it has such a strong emotional heart. I mean, it's been a year, a year and a half since I read this, and I still think about it. I think about it frequently because so much that happened in it, I just have a real visceral memory of. And the ending of this book in particular, you shouldn't really rate a book on the whole because its ending is great. That's always my idea. That's always my perspective. The ending of a book, you shouldn't have to get to the ending to feel like a book was great. You should, though, with A Tale of Two Cities. If you are not feeling it, please read it to the end because the ending is just perfect. It is truly, truly some of the most beautiful writing that you will ever read. This, to me, is the most moving of Charles Dickens's novels that I have read thus far. I cried, cried, cried at the ending of this book, and I still probably couldn't talk to you about it uh, without getting choked up. It's a really a beautiful, beautiful story, uh, and the emotional heart of it is just absolutely incredible. But there are weaknesses here. There are so many weaknesses that I just can't give it five stars. But the ending alone, the through line of a particular character, it's just insane. It's just absolutely perfect. And this, of course, has the iconic opening lines. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom. It was the age of foolishness. It was the epoch of belief. It was the epoch of incredulity. It was the season of light. It was the season of darkness. It was the spring of hope. It was the winter of despair. We had everything before us. We had nothing before us. We were all going direct to heaven. We were all going direct the other way. In short, the period was so far like the present period that some of its noisiest authorities insisted on its being received for good or for evil in the superlative degree of comparison only. There were a king with a large jaw and a queen with a plain face on the throne of England. There were a king with a large jaw and a queen with a fair face on the throne of France. In both countries, it was clearer than crystal to the lords of the state preserves of loaves and fishes that things in general were settled forever. It's just an indication of the absolutely beautiful writing that will be throughout A Tale of Two Cities. And A Tale of Two Cities is one of Dickens's historical fiction novels. So this is set during the French Revolution and it's just absolutely incredible. This is a really high recommend from me in terms of starting with Dickens. Uh, so this one is also relatively short. Uh, so I think it's a really good place to start. At number one, his Great Expectations. I love Great Expectations. I have no words for it. I am hoping to reread it this month because it is just a genuinely spectacular book. It is just so wonderful. To me, Great Expectations is the perfect book. And I think when you say that, people people all have a very different idea of what is perfect, don't we? And to me, I know that the majority of my favorite books are probably objectively not great. 
To me, on an objective level, Great Expectations is a great book. And I think even if you don't like it, you will recognize that it does what it's doing very, very well. Everything has its place in Great Expectations. Everything just comes together like a puzzle. It really, really is a very well-planned book in my opinion. I think that everything that is set up in the beginning of the novel pays off in the end. And there are just some really incredible characters here. This is just a spectacular novel. This is the novel that I started with. And so I did want to talk a little bit about where I would suggest starting with Dickens. And do I suggest starting with Great Expectations? I'm very torn on this because I have been thinking a lot recently about reading an author's most popular work as your first book from them. And whether or not that's something I really like doing and whether or not that's something I would suggest somebody else should do. And I say this because I personally believe Great Expectations is the best Dickens novel. And I truly do not think that anything I have left will beat it. I really, really, truly don't. I think the longer books, I will feel like dragged a bit. And I just think that Great Expectations is really tight. But on the other hand, I do suggest starting with it because if you don't like Dickens, I think at least you will have read one of his best. And so I do think there's merit in reading the most popular or the most talked about novel of an author's because if you don't like them, at least you'll know, hey, I tried the best that they had. But for me now, every Dickens book that I have read since, I have compared in some way, shape, or form to Great Expectations, and they all fall short. Coming up for me with Dickens, I would really like to get to Hard Times. I have a bad feeling about Hard Times. I just think it's gonna be a book that I struggle with. I do like an industrial novel, which is what Hard Times is, but I tend to to really struggle with them. So I think this is one that I might try on audiobook. I think it would probably work very well for me on audio rather than reading it physically. Another on my TBR this month is The Old Curiosity Shop by Charles Dickens. And I would really, really love to get to this this month. I have a good feeling just a really good feeling about the old curiosity shop. This is one that people love or hate. And this is one that I think is pretty frequently talked about as the one that is the most emotionally manipulative. I think this book is a book that Dickens was really criticized for in his own lifetime due to choices that he made with certain characters. Uh, so this is one that I am excited about. I don't even really know what the plot of this is. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to going into this blind. Another that is kind of up next on the docket for me with Dickens is Little Dorrit. And this is one that so many people have recommended to me over the years that I just have a really, really good feeling about it. I feel like I'm probably just going to love this. And I hope that that's true. I've heard so much about Amy, the main character, and I've heard so much about her romance. So this is one that I am really looking forward to. And hopefully I can get to this soon. So where would I suggest you start with Dickens? I don't know that I ever answered that question. I think that probably most people started with A Christmas Carol, and I do think that's probably a really great place to start. I think you'll know quite a bit from it, whether or not you like his writing, but I also would suggest A Tale of Two Cities. I think it's just lovely. I think it's beautifully written. Uh, the characters are a little flat to me, but I think that's also pretty great because if you like this, when you move on to something else from Dickens, I think you'll be really impressed with the character work that he has elsewhere. And absolutely, you can start with my favorite, which is Great Expectations. Great Expectations or David Copperfield are good choices because they're in first person. So you're not automatically overwhelmed by all of the characters and all of the shifting points of view, but Great Expectations is shorter. And to me, it's just the stronger story. So I do recommend this. I think that you could start with Great Expectations and you probably would not regret it.
So that's where I'm at with Charles Dickens. I am really excited for my relationship with him to grow. I'm really excited to read more from him as always. And I hope that this Victober is an opportunity to really uh, continue reading him and really get into his work. I would love to know down below what your relationship with Dickens is, if you really like him, if you really hate him, and what books of his have you read. But that's going to be all for me today. I hope you're all having a great week. Happy reading. Goodbye.